Right, now about time again. What's in this big box? It doesn't weigh anything. Dunno, guess we'll find out. And more importantly, is this a packet of biscuits? Right, what's in this thing? It's always a mystery. It's the fun of it, isn't it? Some fun in my bag. What did I get? What's in the box? Ah. Hey, some oil modules. Cool. That's good, because um, I had a bit of a problem with some other ones. Yeah, I, th I, did, I think I mentioned it in the video previously, or at least I mentioned it on my live stream. I showed it on my live stream. I had a failure on a unit which I needed to try to get on all these bits of junk sitting on the back of my disc right now. Trying to find it all. There you go. I showed a project where I used a touchscreen LCD like this TFT LCD. It's like a lower to Wi Fi gateway which I built using an ESP32 like this. Or in fact, with that. Anyway, I used this buck converter here and this buck converter failed. Short it out and shove the main supply voltage right through to everything, which is supposed to run at 5 volts, which is the lower modules, the SP32, the TFT, <laughs> and everything blew up. So I had a bit of a lesson learned there where I realised I'd forgotten to put any kind of over voltage protection in there. So now I've got a clamping diode across the output. So if I ever get one of these blow again, at least it's going to be clamped down, hopefully, blow this up only and nothing else. Yeah. Anyway, but before that actually happened, I already ordered some more boards. So these are the actual boards which are used to replace them. So these are E32 modules, A68T30D. These are one watt modules. I'll show this one because it's not in a packet because it's dead, Jim. Yes. And if you want to know what's inside of these, this is what's inside it. There you go. That's what's in there. Different angles, get some chip markings off it. Yeah. So that's what's in there. But yeah, um, this one had a bit of a um, a bad day, and over here you can see it's all blown up. So the voltage coming in has blown this. Now, it's possible that's the only thing that's blown on here, but as these are used in an important application I don't want to risk fixing this and have it some kind of intermittent failure or some weird thing that goes on um, so I'm just replacing the whole module I mean it's may repairable but yeah it's not worth risking it don't forget to like the video if you like my bag videos and subscribe if you're not already subscribed and click the bell icon to get notifications about new videos so you don't miss them when I produce them Right, it's a bunch of Banana Jacks binding post things. Let's get one out. It's different colours. These ones actually look like quite nice quality ones actually. So is that secured? No, it's because you can actually take it off and change that if you want to. So that's alright. Um, let's check this end out. Now, I looked at some binding posts in a mailbag not long ago and it turned out the quality of those is really bad. These ones, on the other hand, the exact opposite, these look like really good ones. Got a nice solid mounting on here, All right? So that it's got a nice solid mounting there, and that's not going anywhere. That all looks really good. It's all keyed so it doesn't spin. Yes, yeah, it all looks nice. Decent quality, which is great. This is exactly what I was looking for. In fact, I think I need to buy some more. So this particular assortment has got different colours in it. That's what we got, I think it was five colours was it? And we've got a green one as well as a green one in there too. So, five colours, two of each colour. I did buy some other ones as well, a few different ones on different suppliers. He actually had a purpose for this a project I was going to use it on. Oh yes, that's right. My Solatron 7075 multimeter. That's currently got one of those special five pin connectors on it. Which I've just forgotten the name of Fisher Fisher connector. It's got one of those on there right now. Now I've only got one Fisher cable, and as I purchased recently a Solitron 7061 to use as well, or rather instead of that because it's seven half digit. I'm gonna I want to sell the 7075. If you're New Zealand and you want a 7075 Solitron, let me know because I'm gonna sell it. But what I want to do is convert the connector first to have binding posts. 
like this. So I'm going to take that connector off and put these posts on instead. Because it's cheaper to do that conversion than it is to try and get a cable or a fisher connector. You're looking at sort of $150 for one of those things. It's horrendous. So doing this conversion is a better way of going. And I'm not going to do that on my 7061. And that would be easy to do on that one because it's got a little panel. I'm going to do the 7075 instead. The 7061 is the one I'm going to keep, and I'm going to keep that cable I've already got. Um, so, yes, what I'll do, I'll, I'll use an assortment of these. You know, I need five connectors, uh, one of each colour, and that'll be suitable for positive, negative, sense lines, and guarding. Winner. Now I can do that project too, so I'll probably do a video on that. Hard bit's going mounting it all because it's a bit of a confined space and trying to get a smooth panel and stuff like that, so that's got the tricky bit, but that's doable. So don't forget, there's big links down below for all these things. Those are nice connectors, much better than the last ones I checked out. What do you think about this mailbag foam? I've been using this foam mat for years now, like a few years. I don't know if I've been doing this. How long have I been a YouTuber? I don't know. <laughs> Four years, probably? I don't know. Something like that. I mean, me opening packages up and showing you what I've done, what I've got, real time, as it were. I mean, it, some people just show, hey, I bought, bought this, and they just give you a pile of things. So look, I got this. Whereas I prefer to show the packages arriving and you know being opened up. So these are a selection of adapters. So I showed you before that, I think the last mailbag it was, a little uh, SMA to SMC adapter cable. So these are all SMC adapters. So these are all SMCs in this end. And in this end, we've got either SMA or BNC. I've got all these when I was working on a Rayco Dana 2101 fixed account, which I've mentioned several times in various videos. I also seem to be mentioning it in every video, really, so. And it turns out I didn't have any SMC connectors. I thought I had everything I needed. I had SMA, SMB. No, no, it turns out it's an SMC as well. <laughs> so I actually had trouble probing it initially because I had to you know, be a bit careful what I was doing. Because they had the right connectors for the cables and on the actual modules inside the counter and that sort of stuff. And I realised, ah, oh, I need to get some SMC connectors and adapters. So, there we go. I've got a range of them now. So I've got more males to females than I have the other type. Um, I've only got one set like this, which is the other side. That one there. I think. Oh no, those are the same. Oh, I don't have a variation. Okay. So I never quite remember what I've got these days. Yeah. I still don't know if there's a packet of biscuits. In the meantime, I'm going to open this one. Now, I learned from the last type of one of these because I recognise this packaging style now. Don't ram the ram knife down the back because you'll slice open inside. I can feel there's hollows in the ends. This isn't a box. This is the item wrapped in paper. Don't screw it up. So, hollow this end. It should take on the corners. It's also hollow down this side. That's what I'm cutting. There you go. So the last item I'm going to eat in a mail bag a couple of weeks ago, probably. It's about two or three weeks ago. I didn't realise what it was and I assumed it was a box. And I just got the edge and I went slice like I normally would do to open the boxes up. It would be sliced down the spine. So. This is a sample book of capacitors. These are 08 of fives. So it's what, 0.5 picofarad all the way up to what? 10 microfarad. Wow, that's pretty good. This sort of thing coming in very handy sometimes, you know, it's replacing various parts. 08 of five is pretty big by today's standards. But sometimes the gear I'm working on has this kind of size in it, or if I'm making something myself, making a project, my own project, I'll use a weight of five footprints. But I may put 0603 parts on them. I had a sample book of those, but it's a mixture of resistors and capacitors, and it had very limited value ranges. And so this is uh, far better. Now I've got a bigger selection of them, which is very important. I think we need to find out if there's a packet of biscuits or not. How do we get into this thing without destroying what's in it? 
Hmm. Well, let's just try to carefully open up one end. Yeah, that's successful. Let's get a real knife and let's try and slice it a bit more carefully. I hate the way I wrap it in plastic, but I don't, if I hack into it, I'm not going to destroy it. What is this? It's a cobble tube. Okay. What is it? That's very white. <laughs> uh, I think it's like a diffusion film or something, is it? Oh yeah. It definitely is some kind of diffusion film because I, I can shine light through that. Now the thing is, what was I buy this stuff for? That's right, I was going to build some more lighting assemblies. I was going to put some more lights like up a, no, over here somewhere up the side of my desk. So I'm getting a different lighting angle coming across the desk as well. Um, but I, I was going to build some modules and I thought I'll get some diffusing film. I don't know, I'm not sure this is really the, the best thing for what I want to do. I mean, it's blocking a lot of light out. You can see that in this area here, by putting aside the light, it's changing the brightness a significant amount. It is blocking a lot of light, so maybe it's not best for that. This is more, I think, suited to being reflective film rather than diffusion. It's almost like the stuff they put inside the backs of monitors, like the actual LCD screens, to reflect the light. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, I'll find a useful one. Maybe it's not quite what I wanted, but I'll see. I know what I was going to do with this. Now I remember. Now I remember. My Datron project, which I haven't actually progressed any further. <laughs> I this is something I tend to do, right? Is I'll design an item, some kind of project, I'll solve a problem by designing some kind of electronics thing. I'll solve it, build one or two, and then I'll think, great, I've achieved it and I'll stop. So I've got these Datron displays. I've already pre-printed a whole bunch of actual renunciator sessions. So this is a replacement display for the Datrons. Right, so my original issue was that my Datron display I had on a 162 was blown. It had been smashed. And I didn't have a display. Obviously not easy to get. Very, very rare. So I designed a new display for it. Now there was somebody else who designed a display on an EV blog forum. Um, I forget their name right now. But they did actually approach me as well for me on their boards, I think. But I said, no, I've already designed my own now. It's, I want to give my one a go. So this is my board. And I've already used this in a Datron multimeter. So this has got the enunciators over here. Obviously, all the digits. And over here has got a plus symbol. Well, plus and minus, but it's a combined symbol. I think that's actually a mistake. Um, I think I should probably actually split that off and go back to individual symbols again. But anyway, what I was thinking about was using this diffusion film inside here behind these digits. So if I get one out. You can see you can see through that quite nicely actually like that. Right and see how clear those are. So what I was actually thinking of doing was cutting film inside here and as tedious as that would be and putting a diffusion film in here to help them to look nicer so you don't see the LEDs straight through. So I put a film behind it, it also helps quieten down a little bit, you know, without it, with it. With it, it looks slightly better. So that's what I was probably thinking of as well, was to actually insert those in behind it, these, so it diffuses the LEDs a bit better as well. Um, I think that might be the main reason I got them, actually. I had so many things going on, I have so many projects half done, or completed, and maybe never finished, <laughs> never finished fully. So if you have actually have a Datron multimeter and you've got a blown display, then I can supply you a new display. One like this, maybe even this very one. 
but I can provide you one of these displays. But I say it's got a combined and unshut here, so um, you have to do some conversions on the actual multimeter as well to change the voltages that go to this thing. It's not hard. I did a video actually explaining it all, and also covered it in some other videos when I was working on this project. So it's kind of documented. I've also made notes about it. It's not that hard to do. I don't know, maybe half an hour to modify the board to make it work, and then swap in the display out. It's actually pretty easy, but. I don't see much demand for these things. I mean, I've definitely seen comments about people saying, oh, displays are broken, you can't do anything about that. Throw the multimeter away. Well, it's not really an issue because you can actually mod it. Well, I just designed this myself. I was doing a live stream and designed it on a live stream. So, anyway, it's doable. I'm offering that, but it's not. So, if you need one of those displays, get in touch because I can provide you with one. Um, at a cost, of course, is, I'm not no, I'm going to give these things away. I'm going to charge for them, but. It's better than having a multimeter, this doesn't work. So 1062s, 1061s, 1065, um, 1071, 1081 probably as well. They will all use the same display. Even the calibrators use the same display, but the calibrators have got two displays, it makes it a bit more complicated. You'd have to replace both displays, and I haven't got any kind of guidance on that right now. The 1062 is the one I've got the information on, and that's one of them. So anyway. Some kind of diffusion film which I may or may not use for that. Yeah, so that's kind of a long-winded way of saying I've got some diffusion film. And then we have this box, which is in sacking. It's a bit odd. Let's see if we can get into it. Hmm. I think I might need to use this knife. Because the other one's just going to tear it in there. Don't know what's in it. I'll put it inside a sack. Oh, right, there's the box, let's get into it. Right. Oh, look, spiral binding complete with its own Chinese here. Thank you, China. That's Wonderful. Yes, yeah, so spiral bindings, not too exciting. Now, the reason I got these is that I picked up a Datron service manual book for the 1062, I think it was, and all the spiral bindings are broken. Now, I replaced them with a different binding. It just happens that I have access to binding equipment. And I replaced it, but the binding I had wasn't really big enough. It's a bit on the small side. There was no larger ones at the um, place I was doing the binding. This is something that's going to come up more and more, I think, with me getting manuals and trying to keep good condition manuals and spiral bindings break quite easily. I'll get some more spiral bindings, so I needed one, so I bought 50. Basically, the machine's got like a whole bunch of fingers in it, and what you do is you have the pages pre-punched, or the machine can also punch them as well, but you can only do, I don't know, maybe 10 sheets at a time, maybe, I'm not quite sure, depends on the machine, I suppose. But you line those up, punch them all, and then you put these, you basically sit this on top of the machine and it's got a whole bunch of fingers which go in sideways in here and it hooks them open. So it goes in like that and hooks them open like that. So it actually goes that way up. Right, so you put it on there and it pulls this like that and then you can actually thread on the pages onto these spirals. And then you just pull the lever back and we'll push the lever back and it relaxes all the spirals and it's bound. And those will then go inside like that. And uh, that's one binding, but it's a little bit tedious to do, but it's not too bad. But as when you do it all the time, it'd be easy. I did a lot of binding. But now I've got some options for upgrading some of these manuals. And I've got bad broken bindings, because it happens. I think I've got a few of them, actually. I think I can see three from where I'm sitting which need binding. So, good thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to check the links out down below for anything you've seen here today. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Click the bell icon. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.